Hello and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Plus. Literature Club Plus. Um, we have already gone through Natsuki's route for Act 1. Um, so I'm gonna do Yuri's route now. And it'll probably be faster because of uh, reasons, but I will save it at the same little save spots in case I want to go back and see. Because I've been looking, I've been looking and I've been peeping at if there's any little secrets or anything like that. And uh, it's very much dependent on what you do in the routes, so I'm probably going to go and be pretty tedious about the choices to get the secrets. Uh, but I probably will not show them all. Just some of them. Or if anything is really different. But for now, I'm just gonna go about Yuri's route like regular. Hey! And now we get... We gotta go for Yuri. So what is Yuri like? Frightening. Suicide. Miss for no. Where to go? Imagination. Entropy. Hers seems a lot easier because I just choose the big words. Marriage. Nope. Philosophy. Fickle. Female. Weird. Contamination. Why is contamination something she likes? Variants. Covet. Uh, intellectual. Uh, infallible. Infinite. Vivacious. Disoriented. Uh, eternity. Alright, we've done it. Oh, I was supposed to save there. Is this gonna be different? No, it's the same. Wait, whoa, 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 Go back. Skip unseen text. No, why would I press that? Oh my goodness. Alright, let's try this again. Judgment. Philosophy. Meager. I'm gonna try and get the different passion. No! Uh, Fester. Graveyard. Uh, Disaster. Empty. No! Unending. Oh. I just wanted to see. I thought she. I thought that Yuri would be the type to wear a nightgown. Termination. Hopeless. No. Agonizing. Uh. Uncontrollable. Death. No. Uh. Electricity. Disarray. Uh. Ye if effulgent analysis vitality no go back a new perspective when horrible things no go back Why is this happening? <sighs> I'm just gonna have to do it the regular way because I already fucked up. Okay. Now I won't skip because apparently I've messed something up. Hi again, Punkamus. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha 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 ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Back at the Literature Club. Thanks for keeping your promise, Punkamus. 
I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Okay, this is the same. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some schedule activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from her reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah! Oh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. Hmm. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. I was... If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious. How come... Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah... Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. So you bought one for me. I don't know why you're trying to hide that. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's very engaging and it's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. It's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story so that... Dark turn came from nowhere. Huh? <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Punkamus? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kind of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be a naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with their villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well... I guess it's alright then, but I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to the other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange, and please stop me if I talk if I start talking too much. That's... I don't really think you need to worry. That just means that you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. Ha, <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Uh, let me just get the book. 
I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. <gasps> yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading it in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not per a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? Uh, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Ha ha ha. Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. Oh, I'm getting all hot and bothered. Shoulders touching. Jesus. What do you expect to happen? I was gonna say I'm a red-blooded American male, but uh... I'm not. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you re- are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. Whew. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I could do. Since you've been so patient with me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an, an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second-guesses all the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. Uh, I see. You remain silent for a moment. But Punkamus, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I didn't... I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. Hmm. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. Meh. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. <sighs> Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um... I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. 
Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's a good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. And I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, do you remember? did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Uh, I will have Yuri... I will read Yuri's poem. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? Huh? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Hi. Uh. He's going to hate me. Um. You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. <laughs> That's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Ha 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 So, what kind of writing experience do you have? You, you, your use of imagery and metaphors indicates that... Indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, uh, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. Oh no. Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Huh. You know, I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Punkamus. Ah. Me too. Did I save this? I didn't. Oops. I'll do... Natsuki. What? Punkamus, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. I'm not a rapper. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all started somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'd tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Yeah. I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, because. I think this is the same. Yes. Ah! Was it the same? It just skipped. It said it shouldn't skip if I was talking to things I don't. Great job, Punkamus. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put some effort in. Huh, <laughs> that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of Im imagery and symbolism? Unlike Sayori, who, use who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. 
Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm sure Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. But that's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find that kind of style. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ahahaha. <laughs> Ahaha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. This is... the same? They are Angie now. And I'm gonna choose... Yuri. They said who is correct and who is the not correct. Yuri. Natsuki. You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all! Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously! Mmm. I understand. Yuri. Huh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Aww. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should, too? Mm. Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped, at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, Sayori, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in, on th in the trash. No, Natsuki, that's so extreme. Natsuki, she really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in the adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone have gotten... How could anyone not have gotten flustered after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right, I believe you. Thanks, Plunkamus. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as part of- have you a part of this club now. You're- it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said. About, you know. I would never do anything so shameful. So. Huh? What thing did Natsuki say? Uh, uh um, well, <laughs> never mind that. I'm going to make some more tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Very self-conscious about her tautas. Okay, everyone. Just about time for us to leave. How'd you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. 
It was all right. Well, mostly. Punkamus, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems would turn out even better. Well, okay, I didn't mess up. Hey, Yuri. Huh? Ah, uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Huh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Huh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? <laughs> Let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down at the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are the two- where are you two off to? Huh? We're- we're just- Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Jesus! Damn, we out here. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Punkamus in club activities? Eh? <laughs> Don't put me in the middle of this. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, she's mad. That's why she turned her little booty butt to you. She says, I can't even look at you. Look at... Look at... You can... You can... You can... You can just leave me alone. I didn't know what I was going to say. I got stuck on my words. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, Punkamus. Ah. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. That was uh, unnecessarily confrontational. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but uh, it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Punkamus. How come even when I do something bad, you're being so nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Would I? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah. Uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Punkamus. I really like being friends with you. Ah ha ha. Yeah, buddy. Thanks, Yuri. What a pal. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, let's get that water, friend old buddy old pal. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Punkamus, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. 
Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? Hoo hoo. In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Yeah, something about being alone with all the testosterone really, really puts me, puts me in a good mood. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Because that is what you have told me that you like, and I live only to please you. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah. That's great, Yuri. I'm so glad that that you are learning to, to express yourself freely. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Punkamus. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. All these thoughts and emotions and expressions. Oh, Too much, too much! I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Punkamus, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? In the other route, I saw you sitting on the floor with Natsuki, and I got very jealous. It's a little e bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. That's what happens when you get them freaking bodong hongaros. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why I should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. People are so... So embarrassed about the silliest things. Like having big ol' frickin' tatas. I retrieve the book from my bag. I don't have that problem because I don't have big old dogon conquerors. Gazonga dungalongalongas. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar because I am a monster. You're supposed to share with everyone! I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, it's sexier. Our bodies are even closer to each other because of the wall, I guess. I can't see too well. <sighs> Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Our shoulders are touching. What will the Lord think? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Handing it, holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't actually touch her chest. Oh no! Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. Maybe she wants you to touch her chest. She wears her intense reading expression, and only and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. Brr. After a few minutes, I finally ma I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book and finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, oh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Eh, yeah, are you sure? Well... If I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any... Ha I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Oh! Not my leg! I'm sensitive. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. 
She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. Apprehens- Why is that chocolate so tiny? Was that chocolate always so tiny? It looks very small. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did- Did I just- Yuri looks at, at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Pongamus. Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... Yeah, I mean, it is, but you guys are being weird about it. Not really in this kind of context, but yeah, I mean, usually if you, like, throw a food in your friend mouth, they don't blush really hard and then, like, become breathy. So I guess in this context, it's a little weird. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah, yeah. Then you don't need to stop or anything. Oh, God. Well, I feel like now you do because y'all are being weird about it. The situation, has got, the situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. All of this exchanging of chocolate is too hot and heavy for, uh, for whatever this platform is. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers for school. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine, and she licks my finger like a freak. How did it even come to this? Feeding people chocolate. God won't like this one. Or maybe, maybe God will. I guess it depends on which God. Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm, and I touch the titty. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! Yeah, you better end this one. We're, we're over here. We're, we're basically having sex. You better stop this. Ugh. Ah. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Punkamist, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Cowards. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. <laughs> Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you... like it? Punkamus. This one might even... might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Knees weak. Arms spaghetti. I'm not used to this. Used to what? People talking to me and listening to me. I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing... It just makes me want to kill. Really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. I don't have friends, so who would I share it with? Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Well, you can be wrong if you want to. Even your close friends? Who? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, sucks that you don't have friends. 
Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you, I'll share anything. Yeah. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside of my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. Okay. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its place, its phase, and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistened in the eyes of the, my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto, my newly, onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry and more frequently. So my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Get it? Cause it's not... It's not the raccoon. The raccoon is, is a metaphor. She's just cutting herself and her arm is the bread and the, the raccoon is the desire to self-harm get it is is poetry poetry um i was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's i can see that it's a lot more metaphorical i don't know if it's my fault but i can't begin to imagine what this poem is about huh <laughs> really you can't, Punkamus? You can't figure out what the poem is about? It seems pretty straightforward, but... Maybe that's because I am more aware of... Having a brain. Or mil mental illness. Either are probably... The true. Ah well. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that pe different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Hmm. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because... They're embarrassing. Am I overlooking what that poem is about? It seemed really direct. It seemed really direct to be about, um... The problems with, uh, with the self-harm. And, uh, how it is a... How it is... Bad, but it has the reward and you feel bad about it. Is that... is that incorrect, or is... or is the game lying to me? I trust the game to lie to me. So I'm gonna believe what I believe. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Punkamus? Well... Yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individua individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, titty-touching. There really aren't many people like you, Punkamus. I don't know if that's true. I think there are a lot of people like Punkamus. There's a whole army of Punkamai. Th that's exaggerating a bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. 
but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. I'm gonna save it late. Because I'm bad. Uh, let's do Natsuki, because I know she's gonna be mad. Hmm. Well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh, what do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. S -s don't tell me. Eh? You're not. You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of... This angsty... Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I... I mean... Ugh. Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though I did... Though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. <laughs> Sayori! Oh! I like this one, Punkamus. It has some nice feelings in it. I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Yeah, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Give my poem to Monica. All right, this one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but... But, have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic? That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or what she's talking about, or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside of her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get that much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Eh? You, you completely misunderstood. I'm into you, Monica. Look at that ponytail. How could I... How could I refuse? Ah, calm down. I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Ha, huh, yeah. A fictional one, anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, Monica's kind of like a catty, shady bitch. NGL. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. I know her whole deal is that she's trying to, uh, you know, make you not like the other girls, but that makes her so much more unlikable. If you're just are nice about people, then people will want to be nice to you. You don't want to be mean to people. I think this is the same. Load me. Hmm. I can't skip. Haha. <laughs> Guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the... It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. 
I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. Oh, she does say, this is different, that's why it won't let me skip. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ha ha ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. That's a concern of mine as well. This is the same. So let's say one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I want to see if this is different. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh, but, but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to be really, to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Punkamus. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. Conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. And again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ha ha ha, you admitted it. I just bit my tongue. Ow. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you. Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. Conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Starscape? Okay. Did I save that there? Aw oh, man. Last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked into... Piano. Okay. Uh, so Sayori's being weird, and um, well, weird is probably she's acting off. That's the part we're at, and Monica's gonna go talk to her, which we know is a mistake. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book, but she looks away just as quickly as with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. But now it's a little easier for me to do that. 
I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her. <gasps> I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But, I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I, that I do a lot. So I, it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Eh? This is sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. That's... it's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sorry, and I, Sayori and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. And perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Pompamus. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, that is some shit you just said. So you think that there might be something behind it after all? Behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I notice her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well... I guess that was the case. Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Hmm. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes, and I get lost. I am hypnotized forever. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were e you weren't aware were in you. That is... I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a, I'm, I'm a simple man. I'm a, I'm a turnip farmer. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Huh. I'm not as... That's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. I said what I said. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I guess so. I definitely don't want to think about the person who is upset near me. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we all share our poems now? Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Don't we all? Alright, we're gonna save correctly this time. Alright, and we're gonna start with Yuri. Hmm. Punkamus. Your writing has only improved in the last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this natural. Yuri, that, what's, that's uh, the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me, but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. 
I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? I don't have friends. Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Punkamus, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot to, and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading, and really hate people. Well, that's one way to put it, anyway. But, books are so full of amazing and inspiring people, and uh, reality really just doesn't, you know, measure up to the fantasy. So I don't bother with real people. It's 2D or no D, as they say. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just would make a you know you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. Yeah, I'm sure that you got a lot of people making fun of your just anime curves. And... And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Punkamus. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you. That I really understood what it was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No. That's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. People really do be sleeping on just being a nice, respectful human being. That's really all it takes. Be nice and respectful. Easy. Life hack. I know I'm a difficult person, Punkamus. I speak too slowly. I second-guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then uh, they can go fuck themselves. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, I wouldn't, uh, I don't, I don't know if I would consider you quite a friend, Punkamus, but, uh, a, an acquaintance, sure. I don't, uh, don't go telling people that we're friends, please. If you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? No, please do not look at it. It is very embarrassing and I will literally die. I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light Part 2 The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. Wait. Maybe this is different. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses his path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility, but I'm too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Don't know what this one's about. Pretty sure it's about me. Punkamus. But, uh, the rest of it is lost on me. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. It was I. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Hmm. Do you dislike it? 
Uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. It was for me. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Uh-oh. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me, so thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can... um... The poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. I'm... you mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles as if she doesn't want to, me to notice. You always... you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but... I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah. I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Well, how are they going to read her poem? Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. And then she leaves. And Natsuki's like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, no thanks. Eh, you didn't even... Next! Hi, Punkamus. Your style's gotten so refined, Punkamus. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. I'm not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Eh, that's... Ha <laughs> It's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. Makes me want to make sure that she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright. I get ya. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway. Skip. Uh, we know what happens here, so... Yuri. Oh, shit. I forgot to save. I'm bad. Well, I'll probably be most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki. I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no I was just saying- Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Punkamus? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said it would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Punkamus? Me? Yeah, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. <laughs> That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Y'all can go fuck yourselves. 
Natsuki. What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. Mm, no. That's not what I meant at all. Uh... Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Punkin has picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Well, why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say, even would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I kinda appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. Hmm? You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. <sighs> I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um... Eh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? Not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. I don't want to have to clean up all of the weird anime shit in my room. I'd rather just see your weird anime shit so I won't have- I can judge you, but you can't judge me. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press you. <sighs> I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Punkamus. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? Hmm. I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but, but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell, but until then I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard any a thing from Sayori since she left the club the other day. 
All right, so we talked to Yuri, or we talked to Sayori about her depression, and um, now Yuri is coming to our house. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, oh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have... Oh, oh goodness. I would have reassured you and hurry hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. Ahahaha. <laughs> yeah, it's always clean like this. Don't even worry about it. I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Ah, no. I'd be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah. That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine, uh, but just don't look in my porn drawer. Thanks. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she keeps her... She's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enchantments. Enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help our guests to... I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Hee 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 hee. Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. <laughs> Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see... Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use candle to light the room. I think it would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. It's, in just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole at the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This one... This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than... Because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think it'll be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. 
She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? For tying you up. Well, did you purchase the origami paper like I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces into the ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I have no idea you'd be good at- I had no idea you'd be good at this, Yuri. Is that so? I see you take me as an incompetent prick. Thanks, Punkamus. Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. Hoo hoo hoo. Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Or maybe she's just horny on Maine, and the jasmine is making it worse. Here's a marker, Punkamus. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Oh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge, except for when it's really weird. To each their own, you know? If you promise, you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kinda into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Ah ha 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 You're a freak. Get out of my house. You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's... Well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess, but I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Ha 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 Besides, you're a really cool looking... You're a really cool looking knife. It's a really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with a handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Punkamus! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Huh. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, uh. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound as if that's sanitary. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh, please forgive me. I was being weird, and I, uh, had a... I was... Don't worry about the bloodlust. I have... I... I have tasted human blood before, and I couldn't resist. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Well, how was she trying to help? That's, uh, gross and unsanitary. Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? 
This might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Punkamus! Did you really just do that? Now we're even. <sighs> Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong, because I did. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Punkamus. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? Fuck that bitch. I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh... I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's so... that's relieving. The tension has quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be di it will be too diluted. Yuri, taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back to my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, putting it back over her arm. Ah, uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah. Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. That's a little sus, Yuri. What did you do? Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cup. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the class of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, uh, bitches ain't shit and they ain't saying nothing. It will be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few drops of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah. I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. It is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unusual paint- an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah! Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there, so is there something on my face? 
Yeah, I accidentally got pain on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I got a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Huh. Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh, this is weird. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize for when she reads her books. She's reading into my soul. Almost as if she lost in a day is enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling, or is it a, all the blood leaving my body? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it begins. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looks like the banner as a whole is... Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than have you bring it in the morning. I can do the littering in the classroom before the event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Woo! Ha ha ha. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah. So you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Yuri thinks to herself, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to be a little downcast. I understand why. It sounds like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Ooh. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over and we can go out or somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway... You know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Punkamus. Yuri takes a step closer, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori! Eh? Ah. Uh, hi, Punkamus. Sayori! Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Punkamus. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. 
But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Sari beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sari waves goodbye after her. Sayori. I'm gonna stay with the dearest though, I'm gonna save it. But I'm gonna stay with the dearest friend, and then she's gonna scream. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, as, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. More excited for it to be over. Drrr. Ah. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Ponkamus? What's wrong? Ah, nothing. The poem feels completely different than what Sayori's written, but more than that. Ah, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Ah, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? Quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. And she says... That shit that she says. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to wake her up. Even a simple gesture makes her happy. Besides... I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and what I want to give her. Root Sayers and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori. She's a really heavy sleeper. Alright. So that is... That is, um, Yuri's route, and we're gonna leave it there, and then we're gonna do, uh, Sayori's route, I think, next, and, uh, then we're gonna do any odds and ends to see if I, if I missed, missed anything. Um, I'll probably record that, but it will be, uh, pretty uninteresting. But I'm recording it just in case anything different happens. So that might honestly just be something that's taken out, and I might just use it as a way to show the, the cool stuff in the other menu. But anyway... That is it for this video. It is going to be very long because I'm just going to fit the last two routes into their own video. But I will see everyone in the next video.